In this video, we will be solving rational equations such as these. Okay, so I could cross multiply these, but I'm not going to because um, I'm going to use like denominators instead. And the reason why I'm going to do that is because like denominators work for every equation, not just ones like these, but also ones like these where you could not cross multiply. And sometimes students get confused if I use more than one method. But for the record, you could cross multiply. Um, I want to have like denominators. I can make that happen um, by giving each denominator what the other one has. So, for example, you know what? I'm going to spread this out. I have negative 1 over x minus 3 equals x minus 4 over x squared minus 27. Um, if I could factor this, I would. If this were a 25, I'd be going x plus 5, x minus 5 right now. But because it is a 27, this is unfactorable. So, because the right denominator has x squared minus 7, the left denominator will need x squared minus 27. Did I say 7? I meant 27. Um, anything I multiply in the denominator, I have to also multiply in the numerator. That way, I am really just multiplying by 1, because anything divided by itself is 1. And I don't want to change anything. The left side has an x minus 3, so I need to multiply by x minus 3 over here. Got to put it in the top as well. Now, logic dictates that if the denominators are the same, then the numerators have to also be the same. So I'm going to ignore the denominators for the rest of the problem, and uh, I'm going to set the numerators equal to each other. Okay, so what I have is negative 1 times x squared minus 27 is equal to x minus 4 times x minus 3. Um, so I'm going to deal with this. So doing the distributive property here, I have uh, negative x squared plus 27 equals. Um, you need to do the double distributive property. So x times x, that's x squared x times negative 3 is negative 3x. Negative 4 times x is negative 4x. Negative 4 times negative 3 is positive 12. I would like to um, combine like terms and such. So I have negative x squared plus 27 is equal to x squared minus 7x plus 12. I just combine these like terms. Um, I need to get everything on one side, so I'm going to subtract, at, whoops, I'm going to add x squared to both sides. Okay, um, and at the same time, I will subtract 27 from both sides. Okay, on the left side, that will now give me 0, but x squared plus x squared is 2x squared, and I've got my minus 7x. And this will be minus 15. Um, let's see if this is factorable. If it ever didn't factor, I would have to use the quadratic formula. 2x squared will factor as 2x times x. 15 is probably going to be 3 times 5. Um, it matters whether the 3 goes here and the 5 here or vice versa. But here's how you figure that out. Inner plus outer must equal middle. Inner, I have 3x. Outer, I have 10. I'm multiplying. 10x. To get a negative 7x, I need a positive 3 and a negative 10. So that's positive here and minus here. A positive times a negative is a negative 15, so that works. All right, to finish solving the equation, uh, I'm going to set these two factors now equal to 0. So 2x plus 3 will equal 0. x minus 5 will equal 0. 
Um, subtracting 3, I've got 2x is equal to negative 3. Dividing by 2, I get x is equal to negative 3 over 2. Adding 5 to both sides, I get x equals 5. So those are my two solutions, as long as neither one of them is extraneous. So I'm going to look back to make sure that, um, that none of these are restricted values. So if I set this equal to 0 uh, and solve, this is going to give me um, x cannot equal 3. Um, this is a little more tricky. Um, I feel like I should work this out. If I set x squared minus 27, it equal to zero. You know, the x squared minus 27 can't equal zero. If I add 27 to both sides, that means x squared cannot equal 27. Then I would need to take the square root of both sides. That's going to be plus or minus. So x cannot equal positive or negative. And let's see, what is this? Nine times three. So this is three radical three. Uh, you could use your calculator if you need to. All right, square root of 27. Okay, and that is um, that's three radical three, like I see it. Okay, so those are my excluded values. Um, x cannot equal 3, x cannot equal 3 radical 3, x cannot equal negative 3 radical 3. All right, but none of those are the solutions that we came up with, so we're good with these. All right, let's do number 2. Now, again, we're going to use the like denominator method. And uh, I'm going to spread the problem out so I have room to work. So I have 3 over x minus 1. OK, um, I'm thinking ahead how much space I'm going to need. Um, and then I'm, I'm going to have minus 6. And uh, you know what? I'm just going to go ahead and call this like 6 over 1 for a second. So I'll have a minus right here. Um, leave in some space there and that's equal to 5x over x minus 1. Notice I wrote the 6 as 6 over 1. All right, everything's a fraction so 6 I, I want to look at this as a fraction as well because I'm gonna look at this and think that all of the denominators need to be the same. Um, I see x minus 1 in the other in 2 out of 3 denominators so this needs to be x minus 1 as well which I can do as long as I make the numerator uh, I give the numerator an extra factor of x minus 1 as well now my denominators are all the same if the denominators are the same um, then the numerators must all be equal so it would be like um, canceling out the denominators, you know, ignore all the denominators. So that's going to give you, um, watch out for this negative sign. So I have 3 minus 6 times x minus 1 is equal to 5x. All right, once you ignore the denominators and sort of uh, <coughs> see that the numerators are all equal to each other, then this is what you have. So I have 3. Now be careful, this is a negative 6 at this point. So when I do the distributive property, I'm distributing a negative 6. So this will be negative 6x plus 6. Negative 6 times negative 1 is a positive 6. Right there, that's the most common mistake people make. OK, combining like terms, I have the 3 and the 6, that's 9. So I have negative 6x plus 9 is equal to 5x. All right, let's get these x's together by adding 6x to both sides. 
So that'll give us 9 is equal to 11x. All right, and then we would divide both sides by 11. And that's going to be the final answer. All right, because these cancel out. So x is equal to 9 elevenths. All right, let's take a quick look to make sure this is not extraneous. All right, make sure it's not an excluded value. There's only one excluded value, all right, because I have only one denominator. Um, so if I set that equal to zero, I see that x cannot equal one. All right, and that's now what this is, so we're good. All right, let's keep going. So let's do number three in the same way. So um, I've got 5x over x minus 1. And I've got minus 2 over 1. And I've got 14 over, and you know what? I'm going to go ahead and factor this. x squared minus 1 factors as x minus 1 times x plus 1. All right, the difference of two squares. Now, I need all of the denominators to be the same. So I see x minus 1, x minus 1. That's good so far. But this has x plus 1. So I'm going to put an x plus 1 in the denominator and the numerator. So now these denominators are both the same. Uh, but this has to also be x minus 1, x plus 1. So I'm going to put x minus 1, x plus 1 in the numerator and the denominator. Okay, now all of my denominators are x minus 1, x plus 1. Once you have all of the denominators the same, you can ignore the denominators and just set all the numerators equal to each other. So in other words, I have 5x times x plus 1 minus 2 times x minus 1 x plus 1 is equal to 14. This is my new equation. All right, so we just need to multiply all this out, get rid of all these parentheses. Um, look at this x minus 1 x plus 1. Now I know what this is going to become. If I multiply x minus 1 x plus 1, I'm going to get x squared minus 1. And the reason why I know that is because look where it came from. The difference of two squares. x squared minus 1 is where I got x minus 1 x plus 1 from in the first place. So of course I could turn it back into x minus 1 x plus 1. Now if that's confusing for you in any way, um, you can just multiply it out I guess. Um, you can take your x minus 1 times x plus 1 and do your double distributive property. So you can go x times x and get x squared. x times 1 is x. And then negative 1 times x is negative x. Negative 1 times positive 1 is negative 1. And then the positive x and the negative x cancel each other out. And sure enough, you get x squared minus 1. OK? <clears throat> Or you can just know that that's what it's going to be, like I do. Um, anyway, I'm going to make that change. I'm going to make a change for once in my life. Let's see. So I'm going to distribute this 5x. So that's going to give me 5x squared plus 5x. Now, if I distribute this negative 2, that'll give me negative 2x squared plus 2 is equal to 14. Okay, looking good. So I'm going to combine like terms. I see the 5x squared and the minus 2x squared. So that'll be 3x squared. Um, nothing else, so I'm just going to bring down my 5x and my plus 2. Um, now, and this 14 needs to get over here and join the act. So I'm going to subtract 14 from both sides. 
So that is going to give me 3x squared plus 5x minus 12 is equal to 0. So hopefully this will factor. If it doesn't factor, I will have to use the quadratic formula. So 3x squared is going to factor as 3x and x. 12. 12 can be a bunch of things. Um, 12 is either going to be 3 times 4 or 2 times 6 or 1 times 12. Um, I'll start with the 3 and the 4. Now I know not to put the 3 here because that would make a common factor in one set of parentheses and that shouldn't happen. So I will not waste time on that. I will try 4 here and 3 here. The way I know if this is going to work is because I know that inner plus outer must equal middle. Inner, I have 4x. Outer, I have 9x. I'm multiplying. I can make 5x out of this if I have a negative 4 and a positive 9. So minus 4, positive 3. Uh, also, a negative times a positive is a negative for the negative 12, so this is working. Okay, so now that I have factored it, I can set each of these factors equal to 0. So setting 3x minus 4 equal to 0 and x plus 3 equal to 0. All right here I have 3x equals 4 and x equals 4 over 3. All right, subtracting 3 from both sides gives me x equals negative 3. So those are my two solutions as long as neither one of these are restricted. Okay, so looking back at the original problem, and actually I'm going to look right here um, because I need to realize that I have x plus 1 and x minus 1 in the denominator. If I set each of these factors equal to 0, neither one of these factors is allowed to be 0. So um, looking at the x minus 1, that tells me that x cannot equal positive 1. Looking at the x plus 1, that tells me that x cannot equal negative 1. So those are my excluded values, positive and negative 1. Is that what I got? Nope, N neither of these are excluded, so we're good. OK, let's do number 4 in the same way. All right, I'm just going to space this out a bit. So I have 1 over x minus 5. And then I have another 1 over x minus 5. I feel silly because I could add these together and get two, um, 2 over x minus 5, but I won't do that. I would just follow the procedure, man. Okay, and over here I have x plus 3. Now I am going to go ahead and factor this down. So x squared minus 25, that's x plus 5 x minus 5. So really I've just spaced the problem out uh, even though I factored this. Using the like denominator method um, I see I have x minus 5. Um, this denominator also has an x minus 5 but it also has an x plus 5. So I need an x plus 5. So I will put one in the denominator and the numerator. All right, so it really it makes one, not changing things. Um, same thing. Uh, I need x plus 5, so I'll put that in the top and the bottom. OK, so look, all the denominators are x plus 5, x minus 5 now. Once all the denominators are the same, you can ignore the denominators. All right, and just set all the numerators equal to each other. So what I have at this point is um, uh, 1 times x plus 5. So I just have x plus 5 from this, and then another x plus 5. And that's equal to x plus 3. 
All right, just once the denominators are the same, I can sort of cancel them out. Um, so combining like terms, that's going to give me 2x plus 10 is equal to x plus 3. Um, subtracting x from both sides, um, that's going to give me x plus 10 is equal to 3. And then subtracting 10 from both sides. All right, that's going to give me x equals negative 7. So this is my answer as long as it is not excluded. All right, so looking back at the original stuff, okay, and remembering that this is x plus 5 and x minus 5. So my excluded values come from uh, each of these. Neither one of these factors can equal 0. So looking at the x plus 5, x cannot equal negative 5. Looking at the x minus 5, x cannot equal positive 5. These are my excluded values, my restrictions. All right, but I got negative 7, so that, that's uh, valid. All right, this is a good place to stop this video. I'm at the end of the page. Um, so that's the end of part one. We will do uh, the rest. All right, I guess we have four more problems coming on the next video, starting with this. So I'll see you on the next video.